Rock Creek, Springfield Missionary Baptist Church, uh, 68 Liberty Street in Hawkinsville, Georgia. Uh, this is the Lord has made. We want to say Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays. God has been good to us. He has brought us to this season. Jesus is the reason for the season. Again, let's see what the Lord has to say today. Amen. Good morning again, again, good morning. Uh, let us go into the Word, let us look in the Bible, uh, to the book of John, the book of John, the third chapter in the book of John, uh, third chapter beginning with verses 1, said, There was a man of the Pharisees uh, named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. The same came to Jesus by night and said unto him, Rabbi, we know that thou art a teacher come from God. For no man can do these miracles that thou doest except God be with him. Jesus said unto him, uh, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. And then let us turn our Bibles to the book of Ephesians. The book of Ephesians and the uh, third chapter. The book of Ephesians, third chapter, let us go to verse 20. Ephesians, third chapter, verse 20, said, Now unto him that is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think, according to the power that worketh in us. Again, Ephesians, the third chapter, verse 20, said, Now unto him that is able to do exceedingly above all that we ask or think according to the power that worketh in us. We want to use for a topic or subject to talk to you this morning about anytime, anywhere, are you putting God in a box? Again, with a topic being anytime, anywhere, with a subtopic being are you putting God in a box? A box. Let us talk this morning. Oftentimes, life can become complex and unorthodox. And uh, 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 again, sometimes life can become uh, so complex and unorthodox. Personally, I found that often situations and circumstances have a way of interrupting our plans, and stuff does not always go according to our schedule. Uh, I'm suggesting you this morning that we can't always rely on our routines and our schedules when it comes to the monotony of life. You see, life sometimes just doesn't go according to routines or our schedules. Many times, many times we find ourselves and our life uh, out of whack and we have to deal with so much hustle and business that life forces upon us. You see, life has a way of forcing, uh, 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 getting out of whack and messing up our routine or our schedule. I stopped by the chat this morning that oftentimes, uh, if we are not careful, the hustle and the business uh, that we face can weaken us spiritually and place a strain on our personal relationship with the Lord. Oh, yes, this morning I stopped by to tell you sometimes our schedule and our routine and, and our business can place a strain on our personal relationship with God. Uh, I have to talk to so many people who have been forced to, uh, uh, into various uh, vocational and educational and career uh, uh, paths that cause a strain on their personal relationship with the Lord. Can I help you this morning? I start by saying sometime our education and our career paths and our vocational endeavors have a way of sometimes putting a strain on our relationship with God. Can I, can, I, can I be frank this morning? Many of our personal relationship with the Lord has been weakened and strained simply because we have placed constraints on our relationship with the Lord. We got, got good news this morning. The Lord can be reached anytime and anywhere. 
You see, the Lord operates in any shift that you prefer. Can I just talk to somebody? I'm talking to somebody who has shift work and unorthodox, and unorthodox schedule or heavy schedule that you work at all hours. You report at all hours and you don't have those regular daytime hours. You may work at the midnight hour. But I stop by the chair this morning. If you can reach the Lord early in the morning and late at night. All you got to do is call my stuff by the chair. The Lord of God is an anytime, anywhere God. And sometimes we are put God in a box. I stop by the chair. We serve a God that's able to fit your schedule. Can I just talk with somebody this morning? You see, sometimes our relationship with God can settle into a routine and we really put God in a box without knowing it. Now, don't got to get upset or offended, but recently, many places of worship uh, to choose uh, uh, to limit or cancel in person relationship. This has caused an uproar and even a debate among the religious community. I myself, can I just talk this morning? I myself have been questioned on several occasions why this? Why that? When is in person a service going to commit? I stopped by each other this morning just like everyone else. I miss in person worship and service that more than anything. But can I just speak, drink? There are over 16 million cases of COVID 19 in the United States, with over 300,000 deaths as I speak. Yesterday alone, there were 6,000, listen to me, 6,000 new cases reported in a 24-hour period. But I think under the circumstances that we are in as a nation and a community that we're facing, such complaining is an indication of how we can, if we're not careful, put God in a box. Can, can I just let me let me let me talk slow a little bit a little, for a moment? See, a lot of times this complaining is an indication of how we have really, if we're not careful, we will put God in a box. Now understand, I'm not in judgment of other leaders of how they're handling worship service and church operation. But for me, I'm just doing the best I can and not risk the spread of the day. God has placed on my leadership. Listen, I'm not judging anybody else. I'm just doing the best I can. But these past months have brought me personally to the conclusion that so many have relocated worship and relationship with God to the Lord to the four walls of the sanctuary more than I realized. I myself, I found that I must confess that uh, that I personally, I personally uh, 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 have brought God in when it comes to the sanctuary. I must confess this morning, the last couple of months have forced me to admit that I too have put God in a box. You see, let me explain. I grew up with the understanding that Sunday morning at 11 a.m. was worship time and Sunday was the Lord's day. I for years felt more comfortable with the scheduled worship approach. And I stopped by sometimes our routines and our schedule, sometimes our big comfort, sometimes we are un we unknown and put God in a box when it comes to worship and praise. You know what I'm talking about Sunday morning, Sunday school, 10 a.m., 11 a.m., worship and praise, deep in devotion, choir singing, and preachers. Preach this sermon all in an orderly fashion. Sometimes I stop by to tell you that the Lord and praise and worship and serving God in our relationship, it just doesn't come in a what? An orderly fashion. Sometimes uh, God is able to fit into our unorthodox schedule. But can I tell you, I now realize as bad as I miss my schedule duties, I realize more than ever that I kind of put God in a box. Can I talk this morning? For now, this current situation and this circumstance forced me as a minister to, to minister beyond the wall of the church like never before. Can I just talk this morning? I stop by the church. This current situation and the COVID-19, it has forced me as a minister, as a leader, to operate out of that box that I actually put God in. I've been forced to be 
be more creative in my delivery of the message to people that I would never have thought about doing a year ago. Can I just tell you? Thus, I plan to be even more, to do even more when I return to in-person service, to retain some of the methods, some of the things that I've learned from this, this unorthodox situation that the Lord has shown me in these last couple of months. Your man stopped me the other day, and he said, Pastor Lucas, Reverend Lucas, he said, when I can't wait for church to start back. Uh, when church starts back, I'm, I'm going to change my life. I'm going to come to church and, 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 and I'm going to give my life to Christ. And right then it hit me that. And, and I asked the young man, I said, young man, church has never stopped. I stopped by the tell you. I stopped by the tell the young man. I told him, listen, we, you can't wait to in person service to give your life to Christ. In fact, you can give your life to the Lord right now because he's a anywhere, anytime God. And, and I realized that many times we as people, as believers, we actually put God in a box by our routine and our schedules. Can I move on just a little? So many before the pandemic were hindered by their routine. Likewise, many are hindered in their relationship with the Lord by the routine. The Bible says that God can do imaginable more than what we even imagine or think. The Bible says that now unto him that's able to exceed upon all that we are asked or even think, y'all, according to the power that working in us. I stop by saying many times we are putting God in a box and limiting what God Routines. So God can and is willing to do it in better more than why does it seem that our lives don't reflect their reality? And we want to experience something more. Listen, if we want to experience something more, we have to expect more, good God Almighty. The fact is, our faith or our lack of faith can block a measurable more God wants to do in our lives. I stop and tell somebody this morning, sometimes God wants to do more, but you have blocked God and put God in a box that God can't bless you more than you really willing to receive. I stop and tell you, God is on any time, anywhere, God. And I stop and tell you, don't box God in. I stop and tell somebody this morning, it doesn't matter. Where you at? What time it is? God is there, and all you gotta do is call him. My grandmama said, "You can call him in the midnight hour. Call him early in the morning. It doesn't matter where you at, church. You can be in the building or on your way to work. Can I talk to somebody this morning? He's like, any time and anywhere, God. In our text, I heard Nicodemus, ruler of the Jew, came to Jesus." By night, what appeared to be in seclusion. Huh? But I questioned, first let me tell you something. For a long time I questioned Nicodemus' motive and philosophy of coming to Jesus out of public eyes. Can I pause? This is due to the fact that growing up I was under the impression that one must come down the aisle of the church and confess their sins to God. Oh, come on now. You, some of you came from that same era that our impression was and, and my belief and, and what I saw in the church was that to give your life to Christ and to change your life, one must get up in the church and come down the aisle of the church, come to the front of the church and confess your sins to God. But can I stop by the tell somebody this morning, huh? Good God out of Zion, huh? I now realize that really, really a way of putting God in the box. For me, now God is anytime, anywhere God. Huh? You don't have to wait for Sunday morning. You can come to God right where you are. If it's 12 o'clock, good God about it. In nighttime in your bed, you can confess huh? your sin to God, and he will save you right there in your bed. I stop by to tell somebody, God is there any time anywhere God? You see, church, 
You can tell me God right now. You see, God works every hour of the day. Let me say it again. God works every hour of the day. I stop by the day. For the Bible says, He that watches over us, He did a slumber, no sleep. I stop by the day. Somebody this morning, your confessions are not for everyone, but for God, who is able to forgive you your sin. I stop by to tell somebody, good God, Adonijah, God watches over you. He sees you, and God, like nobody else, he sees what's in your heart. I stop by to tell you, I look, good God about in my life. Some things, good God about it, you can't tell everybody, but I'm glad. You can tell God everything. You see, church, I understand better. I realize uh, that Nicodemus uh, has some reluctance uh, a question about questioning Jesus uh, publicly. Let me say it again. I, I understand, church, uh, why Nicodemus uh, has some revelations. Huh? Good God about it. Uh, why he reluctant. Huh? Good God out of Zion. Huh? Question Jesus uh, in front of the crowd. Because I suggest to you today, uh, everything, uh, everybody ain't ready uh, for what you gotta ask God. Uh, everybody ain't ready uh, for your confession. Everybody ain't ready uh, for what you got to tell the Lord. Uh, everybody in the church uh, is not ready uh, to hear what you gotta say. Everybody's not ready uh, for what's on your heart. Uh, but I stop by the tell you, uh, good God out of Zion, the Lord understand and your confessions sometimes are personal between you and God. Can I just tell you something? Sometimes it's just best to tell him without the judgment of the congregation. Good God Almighty, as I said, I met a young man last week and he informed me that he can't wait for church to start back because he wanted to change his life. Understand the church never closed. Uh, the building that we worship in, uh, the in person, uh, is just temporary closed. Uh, Springfield uh, is not closed. Uh, good God about it. For Springfield should be in your heart. Uh, if Springfield is the church, uh, good God about it, then the church uh, should be in you. Uh, if the building, the four walls uh, are just temporary, uh, are closed, but the church uh, and God worship. Can't be not put in a box for the church is much more than more and break it. If you want to change your life, you can call on him anytime, anywhere. I stop by the tell you, good God out of God. Can I close and ask a question? What constraints do you put on your relationship with God? Listen this morning good. What constraints do you put on your relationship with God? There's an illustration, a ball constrictor, according to National Geographic, can grow about 13 feet on average. The largest ball constrictor recorded was 18 feet in North America. I don't know why, church, but many people have ball constrictor and pet snakes. But in captivity, listen good, a ball constrictor on the average would grow between six and eight feet long. That's in captivity. So why does the ball constrictor grow five to seven feet larger in the wild than in captivity? Remember what I said now, a ball constrictor on the average grows to be 13 feet. But in captivity, the ball constrictor only grows between six and eight feet. Let me ask this morning. You see, the ball constrictor growing proportion to their container. Let me say it again. The ball constrictor actually grows in proportion to the container that they're placed in. A ball constrictor, y'all, in the wild has no limitation impeding this growth. Let me say it again. In the wild church. In nature, the, the ball constrictor has no uh, limitations, huh? Uh, impeding its growth. But when it becomes a house pet, good God about it, it growth is stunned based on the size of the aquarium or the container it lives 
of men. Listen to me, huh? I want you to get this before I close. I suggest this morning, some folks are just like the constrictor, huh? When limited our experience, we strain and put constraints on our relationship with God. Good God about it. See, I stop by the day, sir. We constrain our relationship with God to an hour on Sunday, 20 minutes in the morning, like the book of the scripture. I stop by to tell somebody this morning, God is bigger than we realize. God is able to do anything what we live in him. Good God about it. What we live in him, when we put constraints on our relationship with God, it's not God. But ours. Let me say that again. What we limit when we put constraints on our personal relationship with God is not God's ability, but ours. I stop by to tell you, good God Almighty, we need to stop putting God in a box. You see, we limit our ability to partner with God to see Him do miracles. And do ex and experience uh, how big God is. Uh, I stopped by to tell somebody this morning. God is a uh, any time and anywhere God. I stopped by to tell somebody this morning. God is bigger than you ever could imagine. The Bible says, Good God, I thank you. Your eyes have not seen, nor the ears heard what God has for those who love Him. It's time to realize this morning that no problem in your life is bigger than God. Too many times we focus on how big our problem is in life, than how big God is in our life. I stop by to tell somebody this morning, God is can either anytime, anywhere God. Are you putting God in a box? He's bigger than your problem. He's not limited to the four walls of the church. He's not limited to Sunday morning. You can call him anytime, anywhere. Don't put God we pray that you in a box. Like the service today. Don't box God in. Give it anytime, anywhere, God. We want to say Merry Christmas. Happy holidays. Be safe. Pray for one another. And remember, Jesus is the reason for the season.